Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time I'm going to make a light fitting, and uh, this is for a fairly unusual situation. And uh, here's a picture of the uh, place this is going to be fitted. And uh, what I've got here, this is basically a metal gate, and it's kind that uh, is permanently locked, so only accessible by those who've got the key. There's the keyhole down on the bottom edge there. And uh, the problem with this gate is it's in a particular area where there's very little street lighting, and so at night it's pretty much impossible to see where the keyhole is, and therefore we need some kind of lighting to fit here. Now the uh, owners of this particular property did not want a light just stuck on the top of that uh, column there, because uh, in the past uh, they've had various trouble with uh, vandalism and people climbing over things and whatever else. And of course a big light just stuck on top of there is not actually going to do much for lighting up the keyhole anyway, because it'll be shaded by the very column that it's actually on top of. So what we're going to do is to install an LED strip, and we're actually going to fit it on the angled section on the bottom edge of that big piece of stone on top of the column there, so just highlight that in red there. And uh, because there's virtually no clearance between the actual gate and the uh, post there, it's literally less than an inch or something, then of course we're going to have to make something that's very thin, and literally will just fit along that edge of the stonework. Now this light will be on uh, permanently when it's dark, so we want something that's uh, fairly low power. And of course what we're going to use then is LEDs. Now we've got some LEDs here, these are the uh, very common sort of strip variety, just the 12 volt supply. And this is the ones with the 50-50 LEDs, which are 5 by 5 millimeters in size. So we're going to use some of that. This is a cool white color, which uh, that's really what we've got. And to mount it on, we've got this piece of aluminium angle here, just sort of a uh, 90 degree angle there. This is uh, 25 by 25 millimeters. So I'm going to put the strip into this. And of course, we do need to seal this because it's going to be outside pretty much exposed in all weathers, and although this stuff has that uh, protective gel coating on it, obviously that's not uh, totally suitable for use outside on its own. So here's the aluminium uh, strip here, and I've already cut this down to the appropriate length to fit in that location shown in the photo. And this will be uh, on both sides of the gate, so effectively the gate will come in the centre of this so it can light up both sides, and of course you need the key to open it uh, whichever way you're going. And uh, this is the strip here. I'm going to basically fit a piece in here like this. I'll just cut it at the appropriate length where those copper pads are. So one bit in there. And they're going to put another piece at right angles to that on the other face of that. So of course we get the light uh, coming out in multiple directions. And of course we get a lot more of it because uh, we've got two strips instead of one. Now it has these uh, little wires attached which we're not just going to be using because of course those are far too short. And in this case we need a longer piece to obviously come off at the end of this and go around the corner into a suitable box with a driver inside. So I've got some uh, black uh, wire here which will be used for that purpose. And uh, the first thing we need to do is to obviously remove the wires from the end of this because hey, we're not actually going to be using those. So we can uh, just take some cutters and we're actually just going to cut off the end piece here. And that just leaves us with the uh, copper pads there. And then we need to cut a piece of appropriate length, which will be cutting here, so we have a certain amount of uh, margin at each end. In theory, we could just about fit the whole piece in like that, but unfortunately that leaves absolutely no end for the uh, actual wires to attach, so we'll uh, cut it there so it's got a bit of overlap and space at each end. So again, we'll just cut it there through the centre of those pads. And then of course we need another piece of the same length. And again we'll just cut that here like that. This comes in 5 metre rolls, fairly uh, commonly available from uh, the usual Chinese suppliers. And it's fairly cheap as well, I mean this stuff that now is uh, really a very useful item to use in all kinds of different lighting applications. So this is the 50-50 one, which means the LEDs are 5 by 5 millimetres, and there are other sizes available, but uh, that happens to be the one we're using at the moment. Now the next thing we need to do is to just uh, expose the ends here so we can actually attach wires to them, and uh, this has the gel coating over it, sort of making it uh, semi-waterproof, and what we need to do here is essentially just to cut some of that gel coating away so we can actually solder to those pads. So here's the actual uh, coating here, and the easy way is just take a knife there and just cut through the top gel coating. I uh, notice we're not actually cutting through the uh, circuit board or the backing strip there, 
cut that through and then we can just fold it and peel away the top gel from that. And that just leaves us with the exposed copper pads there, but of course still remains covered over the rest of the strip. So I'll just take down the uh, actual strip to the table so it doesn't start moving about. So just need to apply some solder to each of the four pads here. And you don't want to be holding it on for too long because this is only a sort of plastic uh, based material. So of course uh, it's perfectly possible to actually melt it. So we'll just go in and uh, apply the solder to the various pads there. So basically you want just a uh, blob of solder on all of the four pads there. Now the wire we're going to be using to attach here is actually this, which is actually a coaxial uh, wire here. I've just chosen it because it's very thin, so it'll be easy to uh, just kind of seal and uh, wrap around the corner at the end. And uh, it's not going to be particularly long, it's only going to be sort of, uh, well, this is about two feet long, but uh, yeah, it's probably going to be somewhat shorter than that. So we just need to attach uh, to these strips here. So we're going to use the centre as the positive and the outer as the negative. So it'll just be applied onto the strips like that. And of course we do need to join over to the other strip as well. So we'll just use some additional pieces of wire for that. And for the joining we'll just use this uh, single insulated wire here. This is uh, just tin copper inside. And we'll just basically put a link across from each positive to the positive and of course the negative to the negative. And it is important to get these correct because of course it's not going to work if you get the uh, polarity incorrect. So I just shaped a uh, piece of wire there with the insulation and it will just come straight across like that. And we can just solder that down to the two positive terminals. And then of course we'll do the same with the two negative terminals at the other side there. So now just uh, apply some solder to the end of the wires here and that will make it obviously much easier to uh, apply to the tape when we get to that. So we'll just put some uh, solder on the ends of the wires there and of course we'll trim these to length uh, once we've done this. Now, so we're going to use the outer screen, as it were, as the negative, which is the one at the side here. So we just need to position the wire here, and then just quickly just tack those down into position. And uh, before we do that, we'll just uh, cut those to a suitable length. And in order to make it much easier, again, we'll just place it here, and then just use some tape to secure that temporarily to the table. If you've got three arms, of course, you can hold this and hold that and bring the soldering iron in and then use your fourth fingers to do that. But obviously we don't have that facility here, so we'll just use tape instead. Now the next thing, of course, is to attach it to the aluminium strip. And this has the self-adhesive peel-away backing, so just a question of uh, removing that and obviously sticking it to the aluminium. But uh, before that, we'll just make sure that uh, it does actually work, because if not, and we're kind of wasting our time in the first place. So uh, that seems to operate. So we'll just peel away the backing here and then obviously just stick it down onto the strip of aluminium. So that's in there. So I'll just press that down firmly so that the adhesive adheres to the aluminium. And yes, it still works, which is of course the whole point of the exercise. Now, of course, the end here, we need to do something with this and obviously make sure that the wires don't start pulling out or tearing because, of course, this is a fairly fragile connection at the moment. So what we'll do here is to place some hot glue over the entire thing so then all of the solder area and wires and everything are all fully encapsulated in the glue. And of course that will uh, just lock that in place so it doesn't move around and uh, either short the aluminium or tear off the connections or whatever else. Now this tape does have the gel covering on its own theory, it is at least uh, water resistant. But uh, because this is going outside then we don't really want to rely on that. 
And also then there will be the issue of any water getting behind it and uh, causing the adhesive to come away from the aluminium. Plus we've cut the ends, uh, of course, uh, both sides, so the other end is still open. And although we've covered this with a glue, again, that's not necessarily a waterproof material. So what we're going to do is to actually cover this with a transparent silicone. So I'll just use some tape to basically seal off the ends of the channel there temporarily. And uh, the silicone we're going to use is this one, which is just normal clear silicone sealant. As used, it says here, for putting around uh, baths and other things. Permanently flexible and uh, obviously is watertight when finished. And uh, this again is fairly cheap. This is a very large container. But uh, obviously uh, smaller ones are available, but I'd say it's uh, only a couple of pounds for the entire tube. So we'll uh, just uh, open the uh, cartridge using this dangerous knife. You can get special cutters which do that, but uh, we don't have any of that. A knife does the job. And just apply the nozzle. Now I've had this warming up on the radiator for a while, so it should be fairly flowable. As obviously it was cold, it tends to be uh, considerably thicker. And to apply it, we just use the normal applicator gun, which is one of these in this case. And then it's simply a matter of uh, placing the silicone into the uh, tray there. And we're going to fill it up so it actually covers over the entire strip and the wires at the end and the whole thing. And then of course we'll just leave that to set on a uh, flat, apparently uh, level surface. And in terms of mounting this to the wall, what we'll do in the actual installation is just drill a couple of holes in the side plate here, and then just some screws through to secure it to the stone pillar. Now it hasn't flowed quite as well as I wanted, so I'll just use this tool to a bit of plastic here to smooth that down. So this dry is uh, clear, or basically transparent, so of course uh, not a problem in terms of the light actually coming through. And the objective here is to make sure that it is 100% sealed and nothing's going to be uh, getting in there in terms of water. Yes, yeah, so this does seem to be rather thicker than I uh, imagined it to be, but never mind, we can uh, just smooth that along, no problem. This will also diffuse the light somewhat as well, so you don't get that sort of dots of effect uh, quite as much as you would have before. So in terms of mounting, we'll just put a couple of holes through the edge. Could drill them now, but then the problem then is we don't actually know how that's going to line up with the stonework column. And of course there are things like mortar joints, things to account for, which we don't really want to be just cutting into. So we'll just leave that to the day in question. And again, this is a fairly lightweight thing, so it doesn't actually need a huge amount of heavy duty fixings, purely enough just to secure it to the wall. So that's the assembly complete there, and as you see it's fairly bright there, a decent amount of illumination, and obviously we'll have to leave that to set for at least 24 hours before we can install it. And once it is installed, which will probably be next week, I'll do another just quick video to show what it looks like when it's actually in place. And in terms of current draw, it's about 600 milliamps at 12 volts, so just over 7 watts in total. So not exactly a huge amount, and that's certainly fine for being left on pretty much all the time that it's actually dark. So until next time, thanks for watching.